Thank you, Matt. Uh, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm Dr. Ryan Cole. Um, I'm here representing uh, science and humanity. Uh, I have no con conflicts of interest. I uh, have a background training, a PhD work in immunology. I'm an MD, uh, Mayo Clinic trained. I've seen 500,000 patients in my career, anatomic clinical pathologist with a background in virology and immunology. Um, number one, um, natural immunity from any disease has been recognized for eons from the time we had the Black Plague and people that had recovered from the plague cleared the bodies because they had immunity from the plague to now. We have never ignored natural immunity from recovering from a disease until this last two years for some odd scientific and unexplainable reason. Somebody's had chicken pox, we recognize it. If you go into a hospital and you're gonna to go to work, they check you for your immunity against measles, rubella, mumps, et cetera, to make sure you're immune. We have never in the history of science or humanity ignored something that God gave us um, for a lifetime and for eons. Uh, we have studies, uh, brownstoneinstitute.org has 150 studies showing that natural COVID covered immunity is stronger than a vaccinal immunity. Those are papers by uh, Dr. Paul Alexander. Um, we have studies out of Israel showing a natural COVID recovery immunity is 13 times stronger than a vaccinal immunity. Studies out of Qatar showing it's about 30 times stronger than a vaccinal immunity. Um, in at the CDC, they put out one study, one fake study that was not peer reviewed showing that a uh, vaccine was greater than uh, COVID recovery, was not peer reviewed. Uh, the CDC was queried by attorney Aaron Siri asking if any individual who had COVID recovered was shown to transmit virus to anyone else, they could not do it. In addition, uh, a vaccinated individual studies out of Vietnam, out of Wisconsin, out of California show that somebody who has the vaccine doesn't make a special antibody in their eyes, tears, nose and throat called secretory IgA. Someone who has a vaccine, and this is why we've seen Omicron breakthrough in everybody because those secretory IgA, those little mops that the vaccinated don't make, the vaccinated carry equal or higher volumes of virus in their sinuses, their tears, their throat, as anybody um, who has not been vaccinated. So a vaccine does not prevent, these leaky vaccines don't prevent transmission or spread or disease or death in studies from around the world. Uh, we know in studies and, and solid data out of other countries, uh, as we've seen last week, the CDC has withheld, withheld data from the United States citizens. In other countries where we have solid data, 96% of children in the UK as of January already had had COVID. We're putting policies on people that have you know, gone through the rough course of having this disease, and we need to recognize the plain and simple fact that we're segregating people. We are violating Title VII of the uh, United States Federal Code, and we're treating people separately, under separate but equal. We're violating civil rights of individuals. If you've had COVID, you are recovered. The science shows it. And we're asking people to get a test to maintain employment, even though they've had COVID, when we know that the vaccinated can carry equal volumes of virus. And we're saying they don't need to be tested. We are segregating our society unnecessarily. Okay. Um, and to draw to a conclusion, I saw, I saw the wave there. So um, countless studies, we need to just end the mandates. There's no medical emergency anymore. Natural COVID recovered immunity is long, durable, long lasting. SARS-CoV-1, 18 years later, people are still immune. Um, I say that let's not be a segregational society. Let's recognize our God-given natural immunity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Dr. Latell, thank you, sir. And my colleague, Dr. Urso, is a uh, person well, for I'm Dr. Sorry. Dr. Yeah. Latell. Yeah, if you uh, if you have anything to add, sir, uh, I'll cover some of the same materials. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Representatives, uh, for allowing me to speak. I'm, I'm a background in uh, lab for about 11 years. I've invented an FDA-approved drug. I've done a lot of drug repurposing. Um, I've been practicing physician for 32 years, and I've seen about 300,000 patients. So <clears throat> I think in general, uh, my points, uh, Ryan raised a lot of them, but from the beginning, from March 2020, natural immunity has been neglected for the first time in history, as he just talked about. Um, natural immunity has always been superior to vaccinated immunity through all time. And I'll let you know that Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J &J all went out of their way to eliminate patients with natural immunity from their studies. Why did they do that? I wonder why. Because they re these patients retain an antigenic fragment 
of the virus in their system for a long time. We're finding even 15 months later. They're at serious risk for hyperimmune response. They didn't want their studies to be messed up. So they went out of their way to eliminate every single patient in every single study, J&J, &J, Moderna, Pfizer, to make sure that none of these patients were enrolled in a study. I don't think any of you realize that. So we are taking, let's say, the five children 5 to 11, about 80% have had the virus already. If we mandate the vaccine in this 5 to 11-year-old group, you you're have 28 million kids in the United States. That would be basically somewhere close to 20 million of these kids plus would actually have already had the virus. They're at high risk for a hyperimmune response. That means they're going to die. Some of them are going to die if you mandate a vaccine. That's what that means. So it's very important to realize that if we go down this direction, all right, where we mandate vaccines and people have already had it, we are, we are, it's not a, this is not a civil liberties thing. This is a medical poor decision. This is a major poor decision medically. Forget about the civil liberties. If you allow it to happen, you're allowing children to die. Okay, so I'm going to, he covered a lot of the other things. As you said, there's 700,000 people in the study in Israel, just so you know, that showed that the double vax were 27 times more likely to get reinfected. So it's not, the vaccine, even if we just talk about that, is not stopping infection, it's not stopping transmission. If you look at the studies in England, in Scotland, and in northern countries in Europe where they get real data, that they're actually the triple vaccinated, the most likely to die. So bottom line is that we, as we go forward, the natural immunity is long, broad, and durable. And I don't know if you mentioned it, but we have SARS-CoV-1 patients who still had immunity 18 years later. Let that sink in. 18 years later, we still had immunity from SARS-CoV-1 to SARS-CoV-2. This is long, broad, durable immunity. So what I want to say in closing is natural immunity should be considered legally to be at least equal to vaccinated immunity, and immunity is likely lifelong. Thank you. Do we have any comments or questions to our